Hi, I'm Chad with Move Forward Guitar. This lesson is from our series, Cage Theory. In this lesson, I'm going to give you an introduction to the cage system. First off, if you like all the diagrams for this series, including the diagrams for this lesson, you can download our free e-guide, Cage Theory. But I am working on it as I'm filming this lesson, so it might not be available as you're watching this lesson. If it is available, a link will pop up on the screen that'll allow you to download it. And like I said, it's free, so there's no reason not to download it when it is available. So this is a new series that I'm doing on music theory. And in this series, I'm going to cover the cage system. And if you went through my other series, Music Theory for Guitar, this will be really easy to jump into and start learning right away. If you haven't, you might want to go back and watch at least some of those lessons so that you have the basic knowledge of music theory because a lot of stuff I'm just going to take for granted that you already know. But even if you don't have music theory knowledge, there's still probably a lot you can get from this series so you can keep watching if you'd like. So the cage system can be really useful in helping you systematically segment out your fretboard. Since a guitar is laid out funny compared to an instrument like a piano, you have multiple directions that your pitches go. You can rise going horizontally, you can rise in pitch going vertically. So it can get really confusing. Also you have multiple unison notes, which is another thing that a piano doesn't have, so it can be confusing. There's just a lot to the guitar layout that can make it hard to visualize. So this is one way to break it up to help you understand the layout a little better. And there's a lot more to the cage system. I'm going to dive into all of it. And a lot of people get confused as to why you even learn the cage system. They might get the basic understanding of it down but then have no idea how to actually use it practically. And in this series I'm going to really try my best to break it apart as to why it would be beneficial to know and what you can actually do with it. And I think a lot of the problem that a lot of people have is that a lot of teachers only teach a certain part of it. They'll teach the very basics of it and that's good to a point but it doesn't really give you practical uses for it. So I'm going to really dive into a lot more than just the basics. But this lesson will be the basis because I want to start at the beginning for anyone who doesn't have any knowledge about the cage system. So the cage system is based on the open chords C, A, G, E, D. Those open chords spell cage, that's where this is all coming from. So on your screen you have the basic open chords for the C major, A major, G major, E major, and D major. And if you're taking this lesson I hope you already know how to play all these chords. If not you probably shouldn't be watching this lesson because it'll be a little too advanced. So the first step in understanding the cage system is to take each one of these chords and turn them into movable chords or most of them turn into bar chords, all of them except one. And a bar chord is a movable chord but not all movable chords are bar chords which I'll explain in this lesson. So first off what I'm going to show you is taking all these chords and turning them into movable chords. So if we take the open C major chord which is the first chord in the cage system, that's on your screen now, I've just drawn it on a horizontal diagram. If we were to take this shape and move it up half a step, each one of the notes, just take the whole shape, move it up half a step, it would look like this. So these two notes which were open strings with the open C major chord are now on your fretboard so they have to be fretted. So if you're going to fret these, you're going to have to bar them with your finger. So it would look like this. And this would be a D flat major bar chord with the C shape. So you can see it's just that C major open shape, but now that all the notes are on the fretboard, you have to create a little bar here to catch those two notes that used to be open. And the reason it's a D flat major is because this root note, both your root notes, but you can look at the lowest root note, is a D flat now. When it was an open C major chord, obviously your root note was a C major. So that's really the first step in understanding the cage system is how to take these open chords and move them up the fretboard. So we take this open C major, move it up half a step, now we have a D flat major bar chord using the C shape. And I can move this anywhere. Now that it's a bar chord, it's a movable chord, there's no open strings, I can just move it. I can move it up another step, I'd be on D major because now my root notes are on D. Move it up another step, it would be E flat major because my root notes are on E flat. Or I can move it anywhere. I move it all the way up to the 12th fret, now it'd be an A major bar chord using the C shape because my root notes are on A. Or if I moved it up to the 15th fret, now it's a C major bar chord using the C shape because this is one octave higher than where we started. So this is where we started with the C major open chord, one octave higher which is 12 frets. 
would be the exact same chord one octave higher, but now you're still on the fretboard, so you have to bar these notes instead of them being open strings. And if any of this is confusing as far as root notes or octaves or any of that, I would recommend watching Music Theory for Guitar series that I created, at least the first two sections, because it really talks about a lot of this or really all of this, and it'll really open up your eyes to what I'm talking about if you're really struggling to understand. So that's the C shape. The next chord is the A shape. So C, now A. So we're taking an A major chord. We're gonna do the exact same thing. Move it up half a step. Now everything is on the fretboard. So those two notes that were open now have to be barred. So we're turning it into a bar chord. And usually when this is a bar chord, you're usually barring this as well. So it'd be a B flat major bar chord using the A shape. And that's because the root notes are on B flat now instead of being on A in the open chord. So now just like the C shape, we can move this anywhere. Move it again. We have a B major bar chord using the A shape. Move it anywhere. Move it all the way up to the seventh fret. We have an E major bar chord using the A shape. And this is a really common bar chord. If you know your bar chords, this is one of the first ones you learn. The C shape bar chord is less common. It's still used a lot, but it's usually not one of the first ones you learn but this should be a familiar one to you if you play bar chords. Our next chord is G, so we've gone C, A, now we're on G. If we were to take this and move it up half a step, everything would be on the fretboard, so now we'd have two places that we'd have to bar, and it would look like this, and this would be an A flat major bar chord using the G shape because our root notes are now A flat instead of G. Or you could use this open chord, this voicing of the open chord instead of the last one, so the only difference is that Instead of having your fifth right here, you have another open string, and that's now your third. But it's still a G major open chord. Both of those are really common ways to play a G major open chord. If we move those up half a step, now you have your bar right here, and this is an A flat major bar chord using the G shape. And the G shape bar chord is really hard to play. I never play it because it's really hard to grab quickly. I don't see any point in playing it. I hardly ever see anyone play it unless they're talking about the cage system. So don't think you need to get this down. You're gonna try it and if you're not used to playing more advanced chords, it's gonna just feel impossible to you. But it is important to understand and visualizing the cage system and there's a way to break this up so that it's really easy to play and make it useful. And the first way is just to take out this note right here, and this would be a simplified version of the G shape bar chord, and that's a really useful shape. Or you could take out these two notes and have the higher structure of that bar chord. The only thing about this shape is that your fifth is your lowest note instead of your root being the lowest note, so this is actually a slash chord, it's an inversion, but it's still useful in situations. But for now, I'm gonna be talking about this shape. I think this is a useful shape to be able to visualize and use. So now that this is barred on your fretboard, you can move it anywhere. You can move it all the way up to the 10th fret. That would be a D major bar chord using the G shape. Or you can move it anywhere else on your fretboard and your roots are just gonna determine what the chord is called. The next one is E. So we're on the E of the cage system. C, A, G, now we're on E. So we're taking the E major chord, move that up half a step you end up with this shape, and if you bar these notes, where it is on the fretboard right now would be an F major bar chord using the E shape, and this is a really common bar chord as well, just like the A shape. So if you know your bar chords, you know this chord already. It's used all the time. It's an easy one to play once you get bar chords down. So now this is movable. You can move it anywhere. If I move it up to the eighth fret, I have a C major bar chord using the E shape. And the last one is D, so we've gone through C, A, G, E, now we're on D. Take the D major open chord, move that up half a step. Now it's actually not a bar chord because you're not barring anything, so this is just a movable chord. So like I said, all bar chords are movable because there's no open strings, but not all movable chords are bar chords because a movable chord just means that it doesn't have open strings and you can play it anywhere on the fretboard and the name of the chord is just gonna change based on your roots. So this chord would actually be an E flat major now using the D shape because our roots are on E flat now instead of D. Can move this anywhere. If we move it up to the ninth fret, we'd have a B major using the D shape. So that's the first thing to understand about the cage system is how to take the open chord C, A, G, E, D, move them up onto the fretboard so there's no open strings anymore, 
and either bar them or in the case of the D shape, there's no bar, but it's movable. And now you have the ability to move those chords anywhere up and down the fretboard. And you just have to know the notes on your fretboard to know what the name of the chord is. Because all those chords are major chords, they would still be major chords. You just have to know what the root is to know the name of it. For example, my root right here for this D shape is B, so this is a B major. And wherever I move this shape, wherever my roots are on the fretboard, that would be the name of the chord but it doesn't change to a different quality of chord. It's still a major chord. So that's just the first part of understanding the cage system. Like I said, we're really gonna dive deep into this and explain practical ways to use this. So definitely keep going through this series if you wanna know more and go ahead and move on to the next lesson where I'm gonna talk about how to use this information to play one chord up and down the fretboard. And be sure to download the e-guide. All the diagrams are in there and be sure to subscribe because we add at least one new lesson every day.